Let's talk about the book of Revelation. If you have joined us in these videos, you know that I'm giving supplemental videos as we as a church at Stillwater's Church go through the book of Revelation on Sunday morning. The title of that series is The Lamb, the Lion, and the Warrior King. Jesus is depicted as the Lamb of God and the Lion of the tribe of Judah and the King who conquers, who judges sin, who eventually judges all evil, all evil governments, Satan himself, and he puts them into the lake of fire. And then, of course, he rules and reigns, and we dwell with him and dwell with God the Father forever. So it's a beautiful picture that should comfort us, not scare us. If you look at the book of Revelation simply through events, you might get a little scared. Once again, according to your viewpoint of your interpretation of the book of Revelation, uh, it will color how you see things. Some people see this, and the dispensationalist view is that there's the rapture, where Jesus comes back and takes the church and all believers to heaven, and there's seven years of tribulation, the church is not here, and then Jesus comes again, the second coming of Christ, and the rapture are separate events, according to their viewpoint. And then you have the millennial reign, and then uh, judgment, and then eternity. So um, if you are preterist or historical or some other viewpoint, you may view it as having already some of it having been fulfilled, that some of this represented um, the, the Roman leadership, the Roman government. It represented anti-God, anti-Christ religion, particularly emperor worship of that day. It represented all evil governments of the world and sin. And so uh, according to your view, uh, it will determine what you see. But what I want to show you today is explaining the seals, the bowls, and the trumpets. So no matter what your viewpoint is, you, everyone acknowledges, all scholars believe, that the seals, the bowls, and the trumpets, which there are seven of them each, it represents the judgment of God against sin, against evil, against false religion, against uh, evil governments, and all who have rejected Christ, all antichrists, okay? So uh, this represents the judgment of God. So what I want to show you today is just these seals and bowls and trumpets and kind of show you what they represent and what happens during these judgments, okay? This really is not dependent upon your viewpoint because no matter your, view, your viewpoint you can be a dispensationalist or a preterist or a historical person or whatever and you um, still see how that this happens okay so whether you believe that the church is raptured out and that all Christians don't go through this or if you see this as persecution of the church leading up to the second coming of Christ uh Everybody agrees that these things happen, okay, in God's judgment. So, the seven seals, seven bowls, and seven trumpets describe the end time judgment of God on the unholy trinity, the beast, the false prophet, and the antichrist. Uh, God pours out his judgment on sin, evil governments, false religion, and Satan. Now, notice that this is not God's judgment on believers. So, if you're one of those, like I used to be, I would read it and I'm like, man, this is scary. Well, you don't have to be afraid. This is not God judging you. This is not God judging believers. This is God's judgment on sin and evil and false government and Satan and Antichrist and so forth. So it is among God's final acts to judge evil and to usher in Christ's reign on the earth and finally put Satan and all evil to justice. So this is something that we take comfort in, that eventually all evil in the world and Satan himself is going to be brought to justice. If you're upset over uh, the killing of unborn babies, as you should be, I believe, then rest assured that God will one day bring justice. If you're upset over sex trafficking, as you should be, um, just understand that one day God will bring justice. If you're upset against governments that abuse people and kill its citizens and enslave them, as you should be, just rest assured that one day God is going to bring judgment, okay? So, and these judgments are different 
uh, in the way that they describe things, or um, do they describe the same thing? That, that some people think that these are 21 different judgments, that three sets of seven. Others believe that this is describing really seven types or general categories of, uh, of judgment, and they really describe the same events, okay? So um, you need to understand that um, these are terrible judgments, and they are real judgments from the Lord himself, okay? The seventh seal, the seventh seal introduces the trumpets, and the, the seventh trumpet introduces the seven bowls, and so on and so forth. So let me just kind of divide this out and talk about the seals, the trumpets, and the bowls and what they represent. Uh, well, at least I'm going to tell you what happens uh, during these judgments. Now, whether they are 21 separate judgments or whether it is three ways of describing seven judgments or whether it's generally describing categories of judgments is really not that important. The, the main point, don't miss the main point. It's really easy sometimes to miss the forest for the trees. Don't miss the main point. The main point is that God brings everything to justice, that Jesus wins. Okay, that's the point. And so don't get caught up in what each of these necessarily means. But I'm going to describe um, the different kinds of judgments under each of these groups of seven. First of all, the seven seals. Let me tell you what happens under the seven seals judgments. There's great warfare. Great warfare throughout the earth. There's famine. There are plagues. Uh, different diseases that ravage humanity. There's the martyrdom of believers. There are earthquakes. And then there's astronomical upheaval up in the, the sky, the universe. Okay, Now, I think the argument can be made that even in our day today, we see great warfare throughout the earth. Do we not? There are wars all the time. We see famine. There are places in the world that are on the verge of famine now, okay, or in a full-blown famine. We see plagues. I just think about the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic that happened. I don't think it would be a stretch at all to describe that as a plague that killed millions of people around the world. Uh, believers today are still being martyred for their faith uh, in places like Afghanistan and Iran and Iraq and China and other places. Believers still are in prison. They're being killed. Okay. Um, so uh, I don't think there's any stretch of the imagination to say that there are earthquakes and astronomical upheaval. You could even say uh, climate change or um, upheaval uh, in the way things that go in our world today. So that's the seven seals. Now, here are the seven trumpets. Now, here's what happens and how it's described in Revelation and what happens there. There's hail and fire. Could that represent volcanic activity? I think so. Uh, could that represent weather-related problems? I think so. There's the destruction of plant life. Once again, there are people that think that maybe that describes what happens in climate change or whatever. Um, there's the destruction of aquatic life. Well, we certainly are seeing this today, but people are telling us that even in many lakes and rivers that it's been polluted, even the ocean itself, um, lots of plastic and garbage and everything. And so uh, many fishermen say that they're, they have more difficulty catching fish than they used to. So uh, that's certainly not a, a stretch of the imagination to think of that. The darkening of the sun and moon. This happens under the seven trumpets, okay? The darkening of the sun and moon. Uh, demonic locusts that torture mankind. Now, let me just kind of park here for a second. Um, the, the Bible describes these demonic locusts. At, it calls them locusts, and it says they have... Uh, a head like a man, the face of a man, the hair of a woman. In other words, they got a long hair or a long mane. Teeth of a lion. They have breastplates that they wear, armor that they wear. 
and a body of a horse and a tail like a scorpion with which they can sting. Now, to be honest, um, what John saw in the first century, probably around 95 AD, uh, how would he describe modern day warfare, modern, modern day military? You think of an Apache helicopter that can shoot, or you think of these smart missiles or smart bombs. You think of airplanes. Uh, you think of uh, artillery and, and stuff that we have. How would a person from the first century that didn't know what an airplane was, that didn't know what a tank was, that didn't know what a missile was, that didn't know what a car was, how would he describe things? Well, he might describe it this way. But don't miss the point. These attacks on humanity are driven by demonic forces. So it's important to note that. I believe that all war is driven by demonic forces. I mean, the truth is, um, I believe it was at Patton that said war is hell. The fact is, um, all wars, there are some wars that are defensive in nature, that's true, but somebody had to attack. Somebody had to have the wrong motive. Somebody had to have ill intent. And so all of that is driven by demonic forces. And I, I truly believe that. And then a demonic army kills one third of humanity in the seven trumpets. Now here, I have a question. I'm not saying this is what it is, but what if there were a nuclear attack? A, a worldwide nuclear war? Well, chances are it would kill one third of humanity, right? And so we're not saying specifically what these things are, but what we're saying is it describes things that we can get our head around, okay? And then that leads to the seven bowls. Let me show you what happens here. And once again, when you categorize what's being said about each of these judgments, you can see how one leads to another, how warfare could lead to famine, to lead to, to plagues, uh, how that believers could be uh, uh, murdered and martyred and earthquakes and uh, climate damage and uh, volcanic activity and uh, plant life and, and fish life and the skies and all this driven by demonic forces, demonic uh, war, demonic soldiers, if you will, and, and military. Uh, then no notice what happens under the bowls there is the plague of disease or the judgment of disease. Well, I don't think it's a stretch of the imagination to think that if all these things happen, particularly nuclear warfare, there's going to be disease and death. There's death in the sea. That's the second thing that happens under the bowls. Rivers to blood. Now, is it possible that this literally turns rivers to blood? Of course, but it could mean that the water has been poisoned. Maybe that's by warfare. Um, you know, we could certainly uh, surmise that that would happen. Intense climate change. Um, the advancement of a satanic empowered army against God. Think about all of the forces of the earth rebelling against God and trying to attack the kingdom of God and Jesus Christ. And of course, there are earthquakes and hail. So together, the seals, the trumpets, and the bowls of the end times comprise the great day of God's wrath. So the Bible clearly tells us that God, his wrath is going to be poured out in judgment on sinful humanity, on antichrist, anti-God, governments, Satan himself, uh, anti-God sentiment, false religions, those that reject Jesus Christ, anti-gospel, all sin. Now, God's wrath was poured out on Jesus Christ for our sin, but for those who reject Christ, this is the judgment that God promises. So it really should inform us in the way we live and drive us to share our faith and try to get as many people as possible into the family of God. Well, God bless you. I love you. Thank you for watching today. Share this with somebody. Let them know if you've enjoyed this, and I think it'll, it'll really help. So God bless you. Hope to see you this weekend.